What's going on guys? Tower number nine here and we are going to take a look at some data and see how things have been going in the month of May in the Star Wars Unlimited metagame. Let's take a look. First up, I have information from a big league that was played in May. So based on this data, um, you know we have some uh we have some repeat uh repeat things and some surprises so boba was the most played but sabine was close behind uh boba has a overall pretty favorable win rate in this league with a 53 percent overall uh sabine doing a little better with a 56 percent overall win rate and if we look at the breakdown of the specific uh of the specific leader plus aspect pairings double yellow boba seems to be outperforming green and both double yellow and green are outperforming red and blue so we have double yellow at a 58 percent win rate and green boba at a 53 percent win rate and the other two kind of dragging things down a bit for sabine the formerly most popular uh sabine green has actually become less popular than sabine yellow and is also doing significantly worse with a 55 percent win rate for sabine yellow only a 48 percent win rate for sabine green but the really interesting thing is that double red sabine actually has a 70 percent win rate in this data now that's only across 27 games so it's not a huge sample size but even still it's interesting that the double red seems to be uh doing the best of the different Sabine builds, maybe because in my view, it is the best to deal with control, but honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, in terms of overall leader win rates, Palpatine and Krennic are actually leading the um, are actually leading the overall leader win rates. Palpatine has a 65% overall win rate in this data and Krennic a 58%. Um, and interestingly, Palpatine Red has a 72% win rate, which is the highest leader in aspect combination uh, a little bit more than Sabine Double Red 70%. So pretty interesting there. Um, one other thing is that in le at least in this league, Leia has fallen almost entirely out of the meta with only five games even played. It seems like players, at least in this league, have settled on Sabine being the better aggro leader. Similarly, Aiden has uh, really fallen on hard times here with only 17 games played and a extremely poor 18% win rate, but uh, it's more than Jin Erso, who does not appear in this data at all. So interesting situation there. One other thing to highlight is that Han Solo is not actually doing very well on overall win rate with a 42% win rate, despite being very popular, actually the third most popular hero in this league information. Um, so then let's take a look at the uh, leader and aspect combos that had at least 15 games in this league. So Han Green was actually the most played leader and aspect combo, but as I was just saying, didn't actually do all that well. Trenic Green was right behind and doing great with a 59% overall win rate. Um, I, I have to wonder whether Krennic is a especially well-suited deck in some ways, because I think that he has a pretty good shot against, uh, I think he has a pretty good shot against aggro and at the same time can be quite good against boba so interesting uh interesting situation there the boba players are split but boba yellow has become more popular and has a higher win rate the sabine players are also split but sabine yellow is more popular than sabine green and has a higher win rate um and then sabine red also sneaking in there with a 70 percent win rate as i was discussing earlier but in fewer games luke green had a pretty solid performance with uh you know, actually the third most played combination and a 51% overall win rate, Command continues to be the most popular aspect, but the Energy Conversion Lab might not be as dominant as it once was. I know a lot of the Han Solo players are using 30 HP bases instead, and I think some of the Luke players might be doing that as well, um, which, you know, it's interesting. I know Energy Conversion Lab for a while was considered extremely strong. My personal feeling is that Han likely should be playing Energy Conversion Lab. But, uh, you know, I'm not a I'm not a Han expert by any means. And there are people who have more experience with that leader that disagree with me. And 30 HP Han has been uh, has been pretty prevalent. So moving on from this league data, I have here results that were compiled by Cody. Um, and he has a form here. You can actually scan that QR code to add your own results. Uh, and it is just for store showdowns. We're trying to get a bunch of information from store showdowns. And uh, so in green, we have number of wins. In yellow, we have finalists. And in red, we have top four. Uh, this bar here is 10. This one's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. So uh, looking at the store showdown results, Boba is the uh, Boba is the big winner. 
and uh, Sabine a bit uh, Sabine a bit behind. Um, looks like Boba has you know just eyeballing it. That's maybe I don't know seventeen uh, seventeen or eighteen store showdown wins, and uh, Sabine on ten. Sabine and Boba also having a large fraction of the finalists in top four. Now to be fair, these decks are also more played, but in part they're more played because they're good. So it's sort of complicated. Um, Han actually has the same number of wins as Sabine, at least in this data, and this is incomplete data. Just to be clear, or uh, these these are incomplete data. Data is technically plural. Blah blah blah. Um, so. Han is uh Han has 10 wins but a lot fewer finalists in top fours. Um and so we had first Boba, then Sabine, then Han, then Vader, and then Aiden. So Aiden wasn't doing well in the league data from earlier, but has been picking up some store showdown wins, um, which goes to show that you know you can see kind of different metagames in different areas, and there are different uh, different outcomes as well. So Aiden actually doing quite well here, but doing very poorly in the earlier league. Um, Hera and Jin have no top fours, finalists, or wins at all, though I do happen to know that this is a little out of date. Um, as I have, I personally got a top four with Jin myself in a smaller store showdown. Uh, if you want to know more about that, I'll have a link in the video description below to my video where I go into more detail. I do not think Jin is necessarily the best leader, but I don't think she is uh, in as bad a position as this would indicate. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting stuff here. Um, I believe there was uh, there was some more some more breakdown uh, of this as well that indicated that Boba Yellow was quite outperforming Boba Green. It's really interesting because Boba Yellow is a deck that I actually thought wasn't going to be competitively valid early on. Um, at the time that I thought that, th I would say that the main reason was that Boba Yellow at that time had a uh, was considered to have a very bad matchup against Boba Green. And Boba Green was extremely common. Um, I would say that my impression was that that was like a 70-30 matchup with Boba Green being very strongly favored against Boba Yellow in the early days. Um, but, you know, I had said at the time, if someone can figure out a way to get that matchup even just like even or close to even, Boba Yellow could be quite strong. And I think first off, people have figured that out. Uh, and Boba Yellow is doing better into Boba Green than it once was. But... Second, I think that um, the number of Boba Green players has also decreased a lot with more people playing control decks that can counter Boba and so on. Uh, Boba Green isn't as huge a presence in the meta as it was earlier on, and in fact is, I think, becoming a bit secondary uh, to Boba Yellow, even among the Boba players. So even if Boba Green is uh, well suited to facing Boba Yellow, it no longer has the like level of meta dominance that would previously allow it to drive other decks out in that fashion. So Boba Yellow uh, has its time to shine now and has been doing very well. And shout out, I think, to uh, shout out is in order to Bobby Sapphire from KTOD for popularizing a build with that that's done really well. And also shout out, I think, to Poem for being a uh, for being a Boba Yellow loyalist and developer back when other people were skeptical. And uh, I think that deck has has really ended up uh, has really ended up shining towards the end of this uh, towards the end of this month and uh, and in these store showdown events that we've had in the past few weeks. So yeah, uh, Boba Yellow is definitely a definitely a competitively valid deck, despite what I thought earlier. All right, and then moving on, I actually have data here. So this is a, uh, a very large data set of just games that were played. These are individual games. These are not matches. And these are not tournament or league games necessarily. This is just a bunch of games that was in the that were in this data set. Um, but there are a whole lot of them. So this can this can be useful in terms of general population trends. The other really interesting thing about this data set is that it, it has logged who went first and second. Um, so one of the things that I take away from this is that the difference between going first and going second is not huge, at least in the general population. So we're looking at you know, maybe about a 5% difference, if that, and a lot of, uh, in a lot of cases, a smaller difference. Um, in some cases, uh, certain leaders like Grand Moff Tarkin actually has a higher win rate in this data going second than going first, though I think that's more likely to be noise rather than him actually being favored going second. I could, of course, be wrong. But the other interesting thing is that we have sort of population data here on overall win rates, and it does look like Sabine Wren is at the top of the list with a 59.71% win rate in this data, and this is over a quite large number of games. They're, you know, close to, you know, it's a little bit more than 29,000 games played using Sabine in this data, so that's, that's kind of wild. Um, but... 
Does that mean Sabine is going to destroy every single tournament because she has the highest overall win rate in the population? No, I think Sabine is quite counterable. I think Boba Yellow is actually pretty favored into Sabine, and that is one of the reasons that Boba Yellow has been doing well. It has a, a good answer to uh, the popular the popular Sabine aggro decks. Um, and yeah, Boba Fett, uh, Boba Fett actually doing pretty well in this data himself with a 56.14% win rate when going first. Uh, Sabine has a lower 56.2% win rate going second. Boba also has a lower 53.54% win rate going second. Um, Palpatine is close behind, uh, with a bit above 55 when going first and, uh, close to 52 when going second. And then, uh, Chirrut, interestingly enough, is in the fourth place. And in the fifth place, we actually have Aiden Versio, even the, even though Aiden wasn't doing that well in the league data earlier, she has put up a relatively strong performance here. Um, one other funny note is that, uh, Jin Urso who I discussed a bit previously, is not only the least played leader, but also has the lowest win rate in this data, uh, which is a bit unfortunate, I think. I don't know that uh I don't know that that's reflective of her true potential. I think a lot of people are not playing her and she would actually do better than people think if they tried it. But I'm not claiming that she is the secret meta, the the secret meta queen or whatever. I I, I think that I think that she is a little too fair in some ways. Like she she has like a cool ability that gets you some extra value, but it doesn't do anything really dramatic or crazy necessarily. She doesn't have Boba's potentially huge flip turn and crazy stats for his deployment timing. Uh, uh, similarly, Jin doesn't have the pure aggression that Sabine has with Sabine deploying before all other leaders and really putting that pressure on. Um, now, you know, we'll have to see how things change. I know that in the upcoming uh, Shadows of the Galaxy set, we're going to see some more leaders that deploy on four resources, and it'll be interesting to see whether or not uh, they can replicate some of the success that Sabine has been having, um, and whether, you know, just being a leader that deploys faster in the game, it turns out to be hugely valuable uh, in that aspect. I personally am not sure. I think that it's interesting to note that of the top overall leaders, you know, let, let's say that you think it's... Uh, you know, let's say you just think these win rates are accurate and, you know, Sabine's the best, then it's Boba, then it's Palpatine, uh, then it's Aiden, or or then it's Chiri, then it's Aiden. Well, you know, of those uh, of those five leaders, we have one leader that deploys on four resources, Sabine, two on five, which would be Chiri and Boba, one on six, Aiden, and one on eight, Palpatine. So that's actually a pretty wide range of leader deployment timings, which is interesting. And I'm going to be curious to see what things look like as we move into Shadows of the Galaxy. So, okay, that was the quick data roundup and kind of a grab bag of data from different sources here. What do you think? Uh, what are you, uh, what are you most excited about in the current metagame as we, uh, as we are starting to wrap things up, there's going to be one more month of shadow or of uh, spark of rebellion. And then we're going to be moving into the shadows of the galaxy meta. And I'm going to be very excited to see what happens with Shadows of the Galaxy. What do you guys uh, What do you guys think about this? Do you think these numbers are accurate? Do you think there are still powerful decks or builds that have yet to be unlocked? Or are there new evolutions of the meta that you're considering? Or, you know, have you decided, hey, I'm going to pack it in. I've already played my store showdown. Now it's going to be time for me to uh, fire up, uh, you know, fire up the various videos and so on that have been showing preview cards and start thinking about what I'm going to be doing for uh, set two. So yeah, I'd be, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks to y'all for watching, and we'll be back later with some more Star Wars Unlimited content. I will catch you guys later.